Yeah, and we don't really want to make it, uh, or uh, we don't really want to just talk here the, for the whole session, but we want to make this into a discussion. So um, I or we do have a few slides prepared for the beginning, but uh, you can stop us at any time and we made sure that we have lots of time for discussion at the end because um, similar to uh, what we did yesterday or what we did today with the capture agents we are really interested in uh, your feedback in this area and yeah the the topic we want to discuss is high availability and so yeah let's just start with a little bit of introduction and then come to the discussion later and uh, the first question, I guess, is what exactly is high availability? And if you talk to different people, um, you, I guess, will get completely different answers to that, um, which is always, uh, yeah, fun. And so, yeah, high availability is something mysterious. No one really knows what it is. Um, obviously, there are def definitions out there, but there are someone times conflicting definitions out there and so in some sense uh, for me personally i want to break this down to um if i and i don't care about you if i want to use opencast then i want to be able to use opencast right now and no one and really no one may tell me that i don't or that i can't use opencast right now so that's basically my definition of high availability for this um and yeah so there are obviously results which uh, come from this um and the main thing is obviously that means you you have to have your service up and running uh 24 7 uh, and avoid downtimes and um this downtime often if you talk to people uh they mention the unplanned downtimes, meaning you have a failure, you need something uh, to catch that, have a failover, have uh, replicas, have something for that. But this also includes uh, planned downtimes, uh, which means updates and things like that. And for us, at least, uh, when we talked about this and discussed this internally, what we want to do, actually, we think the planned downtimes for opencast may even be the more crucial ones right now um but yeah so um goals we have internally and we want so you, you have already seen alex uh, uh alex is our developer will work on this this year uh we have some funding for this so we, we want to improve this and uh we had some internal goals and uh yeah what what we like to see as a result here um is um is basically uh, this so kind of do whatever it takes to uh, make updates faster because updates are again one of the major pain points right now where you have to take down your system you do the database migration you do the index rebuild if that's necessary and having that in some way be faster would be awesome um, and it doesn't necessarily be faster per se but even if you could kind of hide this because you could uh, do parts of this online so you have some parts which aren't really uh, important for users uh, be re-indexed later or something like that that would still uh, help so you, but the the downtime really should should be minimized here for the updates so make updates faster is one of our goals here um and yeah the second one is is um obviously in the uh in a best case scenario everything in opencast would be up 21 uh, 24 7 um but the most crucial part here is video delivery so uh, if you have that uh, then th that's our main goal here um and yeah, I would really like to see uh, and talk to you about what you think. Is there something else? And, and uh, do you have 
or see similar goals or do you see different goals there? Um, we also have few ideas of what we would like to look into this year. Um, again, we, we have some time and funding for that. Um, and first and foremost, well, there is the index. Um, it's actually pretty uh, convenient that we have seen Greg's talk right now and we have seen um, Lucas talk before that. So you all know about the indexes in, in Opencast. Um, and you may have seen comments on the list. Why has this become so slow? Uh, it, it used to be faster, uh, which uh, from a technical perspective is, is somewhat funny because uh, we did know that this was quite slow years ago and a few adopters already saw that, but never uh, did anyone really speak up and, and say, okay, yeah, that's something we really need to focus on. We really need to fix because it came up for an update and a lot of places you could schedule updates pretty conveniently in your semester break and then yeah it was inconvenient but no one really did care and for a lot of other institutions with uh, a few hundreds or maybe thousands of recordings it wouldn't really matter but uh, if you remember uh, the first talk of today party is telling us that uh, how much the volume increased. So now uh, every medium installation of Opencast is basically one of the largest installations from back then. So now really everyone uh, knows this is this and, and this is one of the biggest pain points of rebuilding indexes. Um, a few ideas what you, we could take a look at um, is, for example, what data do we actually need for a rebuild? Uh, specifically, we're thinking, for example, about the workflow index, which is rebuilt and you, uh, the code would go through all workflows previously run in Opencast. But the question is, do you really need that? Because in the end, this is mostly only used for uh, showing that the event was um, processed successfully or the processing failed. So these are basically the two information that you can get uh, that you need to rebuild for. Uh, if it's currently running, the you would get this information automatically anyway. Um, and the question would be if that's not something you could do later on, for example, um, uh, while the, the rest of the system is already up and running. Um, there's also, we use Elasticsearch for that. We use single inserts into Elasticsearch. Uh, if you take a look at what uh, Elasticsearch tells you in, I think even the beginner's guide is, is if you have a lot of data you want to put into Elasticsearch at once, then do that. Use the bulk inserts of Elasticsearch. They are much faster. We don't do that because, well, we already have the code for a single interest, so yeah. Uh, it was easier for us to, to just do that. Um, base path abstraction service, uh, if you know uh, the Opencast code, you know uh, that there is a lot of abstraction, the index service, uh, which kind of makes things a little bit slower. So we could take a look at that. Uh, online rebuilds, that's something I've kind of already mentioned above. Um, so maybe parts of this we can rebuild uh, in a running service. And then there is one more thing uh, we could take a look at. So right now, whenever we change the Elasticsearch in any way, we do a full rebuild. But you can do certain operations on in uh, Elasticsearch, which allows you to not require any, a rebuild. Um, this does mean that we need another or a different approach for updates um, and the people contributing the code would actually need to, to make this work and make this happen. But uh, to find out how we would do that, in which case we can do that, that's something where we need to acquire the knowledge and bring this knowledge to the community, I guess, uh, so that we, we can take a look at that. Um, yeah, then obviously the index is not all. There are a uh, single point of failures in Opencast right now. So if something in this breaks, well, you're kind of screwed. Uh, best option is to quickly restart Opencast or something like that. Um, 
And some of these are also uh, performance issues or causing performance issues. For example, uh, the admin node, which can only be, uh, there can only be one admin node and the external API uh, is on that. So back in the days uh, where people would not use the external API, you could, for example, do something like um, run your presentation node, which would deliver uh, the, uh, APIs for the players and for the uh, video portals and so on, and would also deliver the files and you could take it down everything else and you, your video delivery would still be up. Right now, external API, major downside, it's on the admin nodes, uh, so um, you can't take out down the rest of the system anymore. Um, and then, yeah, it's only on that, so you can also not scale in the sense of putting the external API somewhere else and looking into actually putting the external API somewhere else so that you can scale would actually be nice. Um, same, le less important, but it's the same essentially as the admin interface and, and the admin interface API. Um, Workflow service is another thing where you have a single point of failure. And then you have the whole block of job dispatching, uh, where only one uh, service in Opencast actually dispatches jobs. And if that gets blocked by who knows what, um, or the, the server goes down, then processing will hold. And having something like, I don't know, a failover for that, that would probably be the easiest solution. Um, or you could do more restructuring and for example, do something like let workers just pick their own workflows, uh, sorry, their own jobs. Um, that would be something we could look into. And then finally more ideas uh, we have had um, is just some best practice documentation, uh, things where you could take a look at how you could uh, throw thing, use things uh, in a redundant manner and uh, basically do some documentation for Opencast on that, uh, because right now uh, I know that a few people looked into that, but Opencast itself does not have any uh, documentation in the area of high availability. Um, then next one is, and that's always a good idea, basically we could just steal ideas from other projects um, look into what others do, uh, look into uh, what Kubernetes does, look into what, I don't know, uh, Minio has as high availability features or Proxmox or whatever. There are lots of uh, projects out there which are open source and which do interesting stuff. Um, so looking into that and again, brings this knowledge to the community. So this is not only about technical issues, but also about transfer of knowledge um, is the one thing we, thought we could look into. And finally, and kind of I mentioned that again uh, already with the index, but you can also do uh, online updates for other parts of Opencast. So for example, you could in theory do a data mi base migrations uh, online uh, while the system is still running. There are, obviously this does make things a little bit more complicated. And I don't say that we necessarily need to do that. Um, but just looking into this, uh, it could be something we, we could do. So yeah, this is what we had in mind. And now I would like to turn this over to you and ask you, uh, do you have any ideas on this? Uh, do you think, hey, here, yeah, this is a specifically something which hurts us, um, or this is something which you did mention and we we think it makes a ton of sense to look into. And finally, also, uh, if you think that some of the ideas we have are just stupid or uh, or or great, um, so yeah, um, if you're interested, just open your mic and speak up. Um, that would be nice. Uh, we have some comments on our topic. Um... The first one is uh, making video delivery always work requires uh, also that metadata is available via the external APIs for LMS. Uh, yeah, that's true. So uh, I've mentioned before that um, in the good old days uh, where no one would use the external API, uh, that was actually the case. 
um, because you had still, if you just ran presentation, you had the search index for uh, the um, search endpoints, uh, which were used by everyone. And uh, in theory, you could reproduce that with the external API if you take that sort of term wells. And obviously, you then need uh, also make uh, need to make sure that the search index which powers the external API is available uh, still. But um, yeah, th that is the trade-off. And that is uh, one of the major downsides to using the external API right now. Um, I mean, there are other downsides to that, but uh, that, that's enough for discussion. Mm, there's also a comment about, um, we need to think about every step in the pipeline, uh, the ACE, Moodle, and uh, I think Elias already provide a cache and can just retry uploads later on. Uh, I wrote that. Um, uh, so for, for our setup, so in, in, in Minster, we use Moodle. And um, when we do updates, of course, we have downtime, but users are still able to upload. Uh, in Moodle, because NCAs can still record videos, right? Um, which is a thing that is quite nice right now. And uh, I think that, uh, that um, dealing with unavailability is also um, some, uh, can, yeah, is, um, a property that uh, could um, be used for many other components in OpenCast. Um, so um, things like retries, um, retry to uh, update later, or retry, for instance, for the jobs, which uh, is the next comment is about. Uh, if you have a failure and restart on cars, that jobs can always restart and recover properly. Um, are properties that are desirable in, in such an environment because uh, we have to expect that components will fail and need to be restarted. And um, then if that happens, um, they should recover um, correctly. So this is changing the subject just a little bit, but um, you mentioned that <clears throat> the service registries job dispatching runs in one place. And part of my task this year was to sort of make that suck a little bit less, not to run it in multiple places, but to make it easier to spin that up and down um, as part of normal operations. So I have this partially done. Um, I talked with another student, uh, like a master's or bachelor's student yesterday, who is possibly also working on this. Um, so if just, and this is not aimed at you, the speakers in particular here, but anyone, if you are working on making the job dispatching live in multiple places or anything regarding job dispatching, please, please get in touch with me. Um, I'm happy to act as the clearinghouse here. But basically, we had this situation last year where everybody was frantically trying to go online only. And we ended up with, I think, three different Zoom ingest implementations being developed, uh, two of which ended up burning funding and like, it makes more sense to be public about what you're working on. So if you are working on job dispatching, please let me know, talk on matrix, talk on the users list, whatever, because there's no sense in duplicating effort. Um, and if we've got people who already have funding to work on something, then we really shouldn't go looking for more. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Um... Yeah, and, and I also talked to him and might have pointed out that doing a failover isn't actually that hard to do. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we probably cannot rely on students doing our work. Um, would be nice, um, but you rarely see an actual outcome of that. Um, so we will see about that. Um, I also see in the comments that, yeah, uh, updates are a pain. Um, maybe you can speak up uh, about your specific pain points. I mean, I guess I know, um, because I know what our pain points are uh, for updates, but uh, if you can tell us what your pain points are, we, we I know if, if they are the same.
And if no one wants to speak about uh, pain points while updating, um, I could also ask another question, and that is, um, um, did you see specific components of Opencast failing and, and causing trouble in the last couple of years, for example? Uh, because these components are probably then also uh, single point of failures. So we see Alex. I, I don't think we have actually. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't. Know, I don't think I can. Uh, I'm not really quite very qualified about uh, pain points in updating. So I think the last update I did was from one point something to three point something. But um, which that was, was painful. It was so painful. I've never done an upgrade again since. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I agree with uh, Matthias about um, uh, that. We we need to think about the fact that. We are going to have failures and uh, being able to pick up from where we left off or retry gracefully um, is definitely, I think, an import, a very important thing to uh, think about. And as you said, we can do that from sort of the capture agent side at the moment and retry stuff uh, later. But um, yeah, I guess we need to make sure that that is the case everywhere with, with jobs and things as well. Um, we've had uh, some issues with um, job scheduling um but i don't know if that's just because it's very old <laughs> uh, i don't know if these things are fixed or not uh in recent versions yet um but um they're probably not really to do with uh single points of failure so much as the actual yeah i mean they were still run the job scheduling stuff is still running it's just breaking um so uh yeah <laughs> i don't think um i don't think we've had any we're also in the uh, good old days of not using the um external api so we've we're separated on that side of things and our, our um uh video portal um has its own indexes so um doesn't need opencast to be running at all um for uh playback um so yeah i guess there's not really much more i can say about that but uh And maybe continue. Uh, so we tried with Hirocast to have uh, nearly all components uh, in a replicated form. And that also means that we run two instances of the presentation server, uh, such that um, if one is down, another uh, the other one is still available, right? And that requires Solar to be external. And we have seen that um, sometimes the um, uh, sometimes you run into timeouts when you request data from Solar, and the timeout was actually increased once uh, in the code. It's hard coded. Uh, I think uh, Cape Town was increasing it once, <laughs> and we increased it in our code base uh, again, which um, is really not a problem for. Um, if if you run solar internally, because then you have no real timeout, and um, but if you run it externally, you of course have HTTP timeouts that that could happen, and that could also happen with Elasticsearch um, if you replace solar with Elasticsearch, and yeah, we maybe also have to think about um, external systems that really depend on and how to deal with. Um, components not being available or not answering in a timely manner. Of course, this was yeah, simply solved by increasing the timeout, but uh, yeah, can we actually um, handle a missing Elasticsearch um, or a missing um, ActiveMQ? If it's removed, then of course you can. <laughs> but um, yeah, what about other systems? But, okay, uh, you, you're basically saying what happens if your database is, uh, is gone? Uh, can you still talk to the database? I, I, I'm, I don't I'm not, I'm not the, really the point. I'm, 
Yeah, of, of course, we, we can't uh, retrieve data that we need to answer requests, right? Uh, what I'm talk more talking about is resilience. If you have a failure, if your database is down for some time, or um, if your uh, messaging queue is down for some time, can we recover after that um, in such a manner that we can operate again normally? Oh, okay. Yeah, that is actually a pretty good point. So uh, take away your Elasticsearch, spin it up, and everything should still work from that point on again. Um, yeah, that is actually a good point and something you, no, no, not you, we could try uh, ourselves uh, and see uh, how how we can break open cards by taking away dependencies. But isn't in general um, clustering uh, the elastic search uh, one thing that you might want to do to make sure that not a single server or whatever might uh, create such a downtime? Uh, I'm not talking about timeouts, but uh, simply um, dropouts into such a um, uh, setup. Um, yes, that's true, but. Um... This is more or less a mindset that you have to uh, follow. Um, so are you expecting that your service is available all the time? So are you expecting actually an availability of 100%? Um, or do you tolerate downtime and can deal with that? So of course, we also run Elasticsearch in a clustered mode, uh, which also requires some hard coding right now in OpenCast to have OpenCast um, talk to it or create an index in Elasticsearch that uh, replicates data. And yeah, then you can run a cluster of uh, multiple instances on different servers. And if one is down, OpenCast can still talk to another one and you just do a simple run problem, um, load balancing. And also for the database, of course. Um, but um, we, uh, in, in my opinion, we still need to um, expect that things could fail, could go away, and have a plan of how we would deal with that. So if we have a new, um, uh, yeah, if, if we, for instance, um, start a new operation and then would need to insert something in the workflow index um, and the workflow in index is not answering right now, can we put it in there later on? Yeah, I completely agree with you on that uh, because to, to turn your own words against you, Rudiger, do you trust your network and do you trust it's always there and, and to, uh, network services are available? And the answer to that is probably no. So yeah, even a cluster could uh, be a problem uh, to reach at some point. But wouldn't that mean that in general we uh, should make the client, so a Paella player or whatever, even more robust to um, get data whenever possible and store data um, um, to submit it whenever network is working again? So, um, for example, for let's stay with a viewer perspective as a main point. Um, that uh, we cache even more uh, of the video or even like we have it with Netflix and co uh, introduce a download button or whatever to make sure that things get more robust. I, I'm not necessarily proposing to, um, to cache way, way more on the client side and even doing caching in Paylor Player. Um, dealing with downtime of other components can also mean that we simply say, okay, we can't serve you right now. Um, but what I'm talking about is right now, um, and we have seen that um, with Elasticsearch, um, if you have workloads running and for instance, your Elasticsearch cluster or instance um, is running out of memory, that would severely um, puts the workflows in strange states <laughs> and the jobs that are running. And you have to clean that up manually. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm more talking about if things come back online, 
can you operate as if uh, this downturn never happened? Can you recover properly? Okay. Of course, um, during your downtime, you can always say, okay, I can't re um, serve that request right now. Come back later. I'm totally fine with the idea that you are pro uh, proposing that transactions need to be complete in a way so uh, that you always can roll back uh, if an error occurred to make sure that you get into a defined state again and not into something that is not working. Like, let's say... Uh, like you have with any, any application with control Z uh, that you can uh, re undo what you did um, that might also be needed. And uh, again, <laughs> looking at the usability and not as high at high availability, that would also be something where the user could be benefiting from so that you can turn back what you once changed, for example. Another point that, that I want to make is that um, I'm of the opinion that our OpenCast components are currently bundled in a way that, um, yeah, that, that do too much. You mentioned um, splitting uh, job dispatching, splitting external APIs um, into separate components <clears throat> so that you can... Um, uh, yeah, also um, yeah, run, runs in multiple times. What I also think is another thing is the whole video delivery side. So is OpenCast the actual component that um, reads from the disk and delivers video? Or is there some other service that's doing that uh, as, for instance, Nginx or something like that? And can that component then deal with um, OpenCast being offline. So basically saying not only uh, should the presentation server be available uh, standalone, but even saying that uh, you can take away that as well um, and just have the videos. That's something that we do um, because our um, video pool is completely standalone. Um, so stuff is pushed into the uh, video portal indexes from OpenCast. Um, but um, yeah, as long as the video portals are running and each of our each of our instances of our video portal is separate as well. So um, they each have their own indexes, um, which is probably not the best way of doing it, but it, it, it works. And it means that OpenCast can be completely not there at all, um, including all of its any of its databases or in, or um, indexes, Elasticsearch, Solar, everything can be gone, and we can still serve um, videos. I think um, uh, one of the other things uh, you were talking about uh, being able to rebuild uh, indexes um, live. Um, I think that would be really useful. Um, and I think um, I don't know if that's something that's fixed these days, but um, certainly at the moment, rebuilding indexes takes a lot of RAM, <clears throat> um, and we can, you know, um, I, it's something has happened to me in the past, both at Manchester and elsewhere, is that um, on trying to rebuild indexes, um, you end up failing halfway through because uh, you run out of. RAM in the uh, in the virtual machines or whatever, and then you have to go and uh, beg to some infrastructure person that say, uh, <laughs> "Yes, I really do need ten times the amount of RAM than uh, that's about that anyone else has ever used." Um, so yeah, if there's a, if there's a if there's a way of uh, making sure that that is something that we that we could do um, with a normal amount of RAM that we would normally have while the system was running, uh, rather than having to uh, to massive increases in, uh, in VM um, specs, that would be useful as well. There were some improvements uh, in that part in recent OpenCast versions. Cool. Yeah, so uh, basically to, to highlight Catherine's work here, um, there were quite a number of uh, improvements in in that in the last two releases, I think, 
Um, still, if you take a look at the, how long it takes for OpenCast 11 to rebuild uh, an index for, uh, let's just say a larger institution and a larger institution, that's what I meant earlier, is, is quite large by now uh, during the pandemic, doing everyone's own uh, video set OpenCast. And so even that still takes quite a long time. Uh, but yeah, memory usage is uh, something I think we should take a look at, especially if you do that online, because uh, that would mean that, yeah, you, you would have your usual open cast up and running and then still uh, at the same time do uh, parts of the index rebuild, at least maybe even all of the index rebuild. I don't know. Um, yeah, it would definitely be good to be able to to do the, uh, to, to not worry so much about index rebuilding because at the moment that's a big thing um, to decide to do because it means taking everything down for a while and sorting out the RAM and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, if we could, if that could be a, a simpler thing uh, or not so costly thing um, to do, that would be great. Maybe uh, also have some positive things to say. <laughs> um, I'm quite hopeful for Tobira. Uh, for um, acting as yeah, an instance that is more or less a clean slate uh, for um, providing a cache for delivery as well as for interest. I know that I think your interest is currently implemented that this is going directly to OpenCast, but maybe we can also uh, have a cache and um, have a mechanism to retry uploads. Uh, later on, but maybe you guys already uh, thought about that. Um, but I think that Tobira could be a prime candidate for uh, at least helping in the issue of downtime with OpenCast because it's more or less <laughs> baked in into OpenCast. And I, I, I appreciate the effort, but I think that um, at least in the short term, Tobira could be a very good solution in helping with um, dealing with OpenCast updates and still serving users. So might be talking a little bit uh, about Tavira and there's still the Tavira talks who uh, I'm uh, uh, keeping this brief here. Um, yeah, we, we did think about that a little bit and uh, what uh, was mentioned in at Manchester earlier, uh, that you have a cache of your, your data and you only need the videos. That's true for Tibera as well. And we have this task which basically says, uh, or this goal that, which basically says that there should be a read-only mode for Tibera. So you can say, okay, yeah, we, we can't get any new data, we can't do any uploads or updating uh, metadata or, or whatever, uh, but at least we can serve all the data and that is a goal for even if OpenCast is completely down and you only have access to the videos still. Um, so that's the goal for Tobira and uh, that's something uh, we are uh, building into it right now. We are not dealing with, uh, okay, we, we need to cache everything and, and we need to uh, make sure this is sent out later um, because that is, <laughs> is quite hard and could also lead to a lot of uh, weird problems where you then maybe update something into Vera already and it's not actually updated in the backend system. And then at some point you do re do a rebuild and uh, we think happen. So uh, we, we are pretty careful with that and pretty hesitant to touch that. But uh, the we can serve people that's, that should be working with Tubira, but it still doesn't help you if you also serve things via uh, Moodle or Stilipi or uh, Ilias or whatever other thing you have. Okay, uh, Constantine, your question, how long would rebuilding an index at a larger institution typically take? Um, 
it depends on <laughs> on what you're actually rebuilding. And I don't have any numbers for, um, I don't know, for, for 11, Opencast 11 right now. And it should be faster in Opencast 11, but uh, remembering the switch index rebuilds, the last couple of ones, um, that could take two days. Um, own, uh, that's two days only rebuilding the index. And worst case, what could happen even is uh, what was mentioned earlier, that you did calculate the uh, amount of memory from which you did need for the index rebuild. And so one and a half day into the index rebuild, things would break. And I'm not saying that this ever happened, but uh, that, um, yeah. So th this is really the worst case. And I, I do think with uh, new things in there, uh, this should be quite a lot faster, but I would still expect for a larger institution, at least a number of hours, uh, probably last half a day or something. Yeah. We did this last week at the University of Osnabrück. Uh, Timo already wrote that's roughly 24 hours. I guess it was 27 hours for uh, nearly 38,000 videos. So uh, to give you an idea, but again, there are other factors like how many, much RAM, how fast are your processors and all the other things um, to consider. And, uh, but uh, yeah, if you have, uh, several ten thousands of videos uh, it takes time and we would hope to get this drastically down still to a few hours let's say uh, this way or that uh, even if it takes so long we have to consider how to do this in parallel um that would be the alternative i guess and yeah I can uh Support is very, very uh, annoyed if we have uh, two days downtime for an update, because I would say that were roughly 30 to 50 requests uh, at the support. Also, we announced this a month uh, earlier and tried to get it to every uh, communication channel at the university that this will happen. We had 30 to 50 people contacting support. Why is this not working? And that could not be true. I have an exam to write or whatever. Yes, this is also yeah. our experience. I sometimes envy the banking systems um, because they always have the night. Um, <laughs> there's always a day that uh, yeah they don't uh, need to serve users anymore. Uh, but this is no longer true for, for us. And we noticed that during the pandemic that no, the um, semester break is not an ideal time because there are still users uh, watching videos and creating videos. Um, and there is basically no idea time anymore for, for an extended period of, of downtime. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, so Dan, I would say uh, thank you very much for your input. Um, again, uh, we will take a look at this uh, in the remainder of this year, at least. Uh, and we we have some, uh, yeah, so some fun to make that happen and to do some improvements. Um, I'm not going to promise anything uh, in terms of results. Uh, so we will see what we actually do and actually manage to do. Um, but if you happen to have uh, any feedback in the meantime. Uh, if you notice something during an update or something like that, please bring this up um, and not necessarily only bring this up with us. Um, a very good place to talk about something like this is the uh, technical meeting happens um, every Tuesday at 3.15 p.m. UTC. So here we are again at, at UTC and uh, bring something like up uh, on that meeting is a good way to go forward and to get some technical aspects of this discussed. Um, also, if you're working on something like that, again, please let us know. Uh, it's something that Rüdiger mentioned earlier on, on his talk. Um, if you have, no, I think Greg mentioned that earlier in his talk. Uh, if you have multiple people working on the same thing, that is kind of a waste of time. Um, so um, please let us know, please, please reach out to us and talk to us what you're planning to do and then we can uh, coordinate that um, 
And then, yeah, I guess we can wrap up today. Um, thank you for attending today and um, I guess see you tomorrow.